Welcome to Electron Line. While studying the electric field and Gauss's law and things like that, you will encounter the concept of electric flux. And the concept of electric flux is a little bit confusing, so here we're going to try and make it a little bit more understandable. So, what is electric flux? Well, let's go back to the concept of the electric field and the electric field lines. Whenever we have positive charges somewhere, emanating from that positive charge will be an electric field represented by these arrows here. Those are called electric field lines. And then if we do set up an arbitrary surface some distance away from the source, and so that surface will have a certain amount of surface area, we can then see that some of those electric field lines will go through the surface area. Over here we have another plate here with charge on it, but much less charge than we had over here. So you can see far fewer electric field lines because electric field is indeed weaker here because it's caused by less charge. The field lines will be farther apart from one another and it's the density of the field lines that indicate the strength of the electric field. If we put a similar surface in front of that, like we did over here, notice that far fewer of those lines will actually pass through the surface. Well, it turns out that electric flux can be defined as the amount of electric field lines passing through a surface like that. So there's more flux going through the surface here, there's less flux going through the surface over there. So, going back to the definition, the electric field lines represent the magnitude and direction of the electric field. Again, the direction of the arrows is the direction of the electric field. The magnitude is determined by the density of those lines. The density of the lines represent the strength or the magnitude of the electric field. Now, here's where we see the analogy. The density of the lines is proportional to the density of the electric flux. So we can almost envision electric flux being represented by those very same electric field lines, except the difference is that we only tend to talk about flux as the quantity of those lines going through the area that is set up there. It could be a surface, it could be a window, it doesn't matter what it is, but we take a certain area and the amount of electric field lines going through that window, that surface, is then defined as the electric flux. Now, it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence, because there's no real definition for the number of electric field lines that should be emanating from a, a number of charges there, but at least it's, it's proportional. So the electric flux again can be defined as the number of lines passing through a given surface. Again, the number, take that with a grain of salt because, again, it's proportional to the number. Maybe what I should have said, the electric flux can be defined as, the, as being proportional, and maybe, so as what I'm going to do here is as being proportional to the number, so to the number of lines passing through a given surface. And that's actually a more accurate definition. So in a way, you can think of it as the number of lines, but it's better to say that it's being proportional to the number of lines because the actual value of the flux, we'll show you how to calculate that in just a moment. What we should realize though, is that if you double the area, so if you make this twice as big, but you leave everything else the same, you'll have twice as much flux. So you can see that you can have more flux by just allowing a greater window, a greater surface through which the lines can pass. Also, if you leave the size of the window, the size of the surface the same, and you double the electric field strength, then you'll, of course, also double the flux because then the density of the field lines will double. And that means you'll have more flux going through the surface as before. And if the field lines, the flux, is not perpendicular, we also have to multiply by the cosine of the angle. So it's not just that the flux has to go through the window somehow at an angle or straight ahead. If it's not straight perpendicular to the surface, the amount of flux actually decreases even if the number lines do stay the same. So there's another caveat there, there's another difference we have to take, uh, take into account. So basically, we use the letter phi in the Greek alphabet, the capital letter phi, to indicate flux, and the sub E there means that it's electric flux. So the electric flux is equal to the product of the electric field and the area of the surface. Now, notice that these, these are both vector quantities, you may say, well, how can we have a vector quantity of an area? Well, that means that we have to take into account the orientation of the area. And so basically, 
it's the area would be the perpendicular line to the area multiplied times the area multiplied times the electric field string. In essence, it's the magnitude of the electric field times the size of the area times the cosine of the angle between the direction of the electric field and the direction of the normal to the surface. So if the field lines are in uh, incident perpendicular to the surface, we simply multiply E times A and we're done. But if the field lines come in at an angle, so that they form an angle relative to the perpendicular to the surface, then the electric flux can be, can be calculated to be the electric field strength times the area of the surface times the cosine of the angle between the perpendicular to the area and the direction of the electric field. We'll show you some examples of that later, but at least this gives you an indication now what the electric flux is. So it's analogous to electric field lines going through a surface. It's proportional, it's not a one-to-one -one correspondent, but the stronger the field, the more lines, the more flux. That does seem to hold. If you double the number of lines, you double the flux. But notice that if the flux comes through the, the surface at an angle, it actually decreases, or if the field lines, I should say, go through the surface, it decreases the flux. We have to multiply times the cosine of the angle theta. It does have an effect. So that hopefully defines to us what the electric flux is. And so now that when we see it, we don't have to be afraid of it. We realize, oh, it's just a total number of field lines going through the surface, and of course, adjusted by the angle that they have relative to the perpendicular to the surface. And that's how we know.